I guess the uh, how we started making um, leather goods goes back a little bit over probably 30 years ago. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna t tell you a story about how the whole thing began. Um, I was brought up in a house with a whole bunch of kids, brothers, sisters, cousins, and um, and uh, my uncle had a small shop, leather shop, and uh, when we, after school, uh, we all came in and everybody had a different duty. Uh, everybody was supposed to help, and we help out on, you know, sweeping the floor, keeping things clean, uh, you know, the regular things that happen around the shop area. Uh, so every kid had a different assignment. Uh, the oldest would have more responsibility and he would learn, start learning how to work with leather. Uh, and just to give you a kind of setup, how the shop was set up, it was, there was a guy who, uh, let me tell you what he made, uh, my uncle. He made belts, wallets, um, gun, gun holsters, uh, small suitcases, briefcases, messenger bags. Yeah, so he didn't do anything, um, you know, like ladies' purses or lady bags and things like that, just because he didn't have the machinery at the time, because everything was handmade only with a couple of small sewing machines. So everything was um, hand cut, you know, cut, cut. Uh, the leather was cut by hand, not by machine, and uh, everybody had a different duties. So as you grow older, you will take up on certain responsibilities. So myself, I didn't want to sweep the floor, so I had to quick, quickly learn how to do certain things. So you start by, you know, learning how to cut. The first thing you obviously, obviously do in those days was just go to a store and learn about the leather and what kind of leather they will use for certain things to do different items. Um, then you start by, so your first job actually was going from the store and you pick up the leather at the store and you walk it to the shop. Uh, it was about a couple of blocks away from the shop, so um, the um, the uh, after that you start learning how to cut the leather, you know, uh, and then after that you learn how to make the leather thin in the machine, skiving it, uh, and then you know how you use the uh, certain glues and things like that and so on. So it was a, a process of learning. It would take you a couple of months, a couple of years to do that. So. I learned how to do, how to make all those things, you know, and then uh, my uncle will have somebody who was very good at doing certain things, you know, because you have different quote unquote departments with the shop, you know, there was a guy who made only wallets, there was a guy who made only belts, there was a guy who made only messenger bags, and there was a guy who made only small luggage and briefcase and things like that. So everybody had the little thing. So he, what he did with the kids was he would pair up he would pair you up with somebody who kind of take you under the wing and kind of teach you. That's how the business will learn those days. There was no school for that. There was no, you know, you're not going to go to school how to learn this thing. You learn it at the shop with somebody else who had more experience than you and that person learned it from somebody else and so on and so forth. So you have a whole bunch of actually, a whole bunch of people working in a small shop. There was always a guy who was 100 years old who's been doing it forever. There was a guy who was a middle-aged guy. There was a guy who was in the early 30s. There was a kid who was in the early 20s, and there was another kid that was uh, 10, 12, 15 years old learning the, the trade. So I learned how to do that, and something happened. We moved to the States. We moved to America, and I did learn a lot about uh, leather. Uh, but I moved to the States when I was uh, a, a young kid, and I went to school, went to high school, went to college, got myself a job. And eventually I did became a professional caterer so my 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 profession as of so right now is I'm a caterer um, and next thing I know uh, just like everybody else I know in this industry time flew by and next thing I know is 30 years later so about two years ago I uh, I think I wanted to do this out of uh, 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 out of necessity, I always wanted to get a small wallet, but actually I couldn't find something that I like and I wanted to purchase. And I have gone through so many wallets on, uh, you know, the ones that you get from department stores and things like that. So I said, you know what, let me go back and reconnect with my early profession. So I did a little research. I went to Google and I started, you know, 
finding things out where to buy leather, tools, things like that. And I wanted to, so I purchased a piece of leather and I made myself a wallet and, you know, um, I, I was a little rustic about, um, uh, you know, my skills, but little by little, you know, we re I reconnected with my, my, my first profession. So, here's my dog right over here. So, I started to purchasing tools and leather and I became more aware and, you know, I learned how to things are, you know, the, the trade, the, the leather trade industry here in the States and so on. So I, myself, I made myself a wallet and I said, you know what, uh, let me see if I can put it on uh, on the Etsy store. And so, and so I, we set up a little Etsy store and um, we started to sell wallets. Next thing I know, um, I wanted to make a whole bunch of different wallets and I set them up at the store and some of them did sell and some of them didn't. So then I streamlined my line of wallets, what exactly I want to do. I wanted to make, uh, the philosophy be, uh, behind um, the wallets is it has to be, everything has to be sourced out here in America. The leather, the tools, uh, the thread, the cement that we use. And we want to make, I want to make something that's simple, elegant, and something that guys like. Uh, you know, I take the concept of a wallet and the the more compartments the wallet will have the more junk you will uh, store in there you know if you take a regular wallet the size of a brick and you have all types of things there receives from 10 years ago things that you don't even need membership cards to things that you don't even attend anymore a whole bunch of different things credit cards I mean things that are expired already who knows so I wanted to make something that's minimalist. So we designed the minimalist wallet that we do here just for that purpose. So just to go back to what I was saying before, how we got back into the, the leather industry. It just So I started selling my little wallets on, on, on Etsy store. And uh, next thing I know, we're making more and more and more. And we're streamlining the design of it. Now we are making minimalist wallets. We're making mouse pads. We're making keychains. We're making the, the money clip, and we're making a couple of other things as well. Uh, so we want to make sure what sells, you know. Uh, and again, it has to have certain components. It has to be made in, is made in America, is 100% handmade, is 100% hand-stitched. The leather, sometimes we use natural vegetable leather, is hand dye. You know, everything is done by hand. So that's why, you know, if you go to a store and you buy, my wallet's start pricing is $45 and they go up and up. Now, if you go to a store and you buy yourself a wallet, uh, but that wallet might be cheaper, uh, but remember, it's not really genuine leather, it's not real leather, it's not full grain leather, uh, it's made not in America, uh, and it's gonna last you six months. What I wanna do is, you know, nowadays when you purchase a wallet from us, I want, I want it to be the last time you ever buy a wallet because it's very simple. When you buy a wallet from us, uh, that will be the last time you ever pay for a wallet because when you tire your wallet a couple of years from now and it's all beat up and quote unquote falling apart, what you're going to do is you're going to send it back to us and we're going to send you a new wallet at no charge. In the meantime, what I'd like you to do is go to a little store, whether it's a website or whatever we are going to be a year from now, whatever, and just look around and purchase things from us. That could be just a keychain or, or a mouse pad, uh, you know, whatever you want to purchase from us. You know, I, 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 I wanted to think like something like this. If you go to a restaurant, right, and you buy yourself a porterhouse steak for two and you pay $80, and then the guy who owns the restaurant gives you a nice glass glass of wine for free. That's what I want to do. I want to give you that minimalist wallet for for free for the rest of your life. As long as as long as I'm alive, as long as the company's running, I, you get that minimalist wallet for free. You as a preferred client or preferred customer. So basically, that's that that's the whole story of. All other people have asked me how the name Allen and Bradley came about. Now. The name, if you look at leather goods, uh, nice, well-known leather goods around the world usually have the name of the guy who's the designer, the guy who owns the company, 
or two guys. To give an example is like for instance, um, Johnston and Murphy, which happens to be a shoe company. They make top-notch um, uh, shoes. Um, Salvatore Ferragamo, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing the name correct. He's a guy also who makes shoes and leather goods and things like that. So I choose the name Allen and Bradley. Allen because it's my middle name and uh, Bradley because Bradley is my daughter's middle name. So actually Allen and Bradley is myself and my daughter who are behind the company. I'm the guy who produces everything. She's the guy, she's the girl who approves of everything else. Uh, lead design and things like that. So um, anytime I make something, I show it to her and we go over the details. Should we make it this? Should we make it more like this? Should we have this? Should we have that? We like to make things that are elegant and non-complicated. I mean, there are so many things that you can make that you can have packets for uh, 100 credit cards and more and zippers and things and bells all the stuff you know I, it's fine if somebody else wants to do it I don't want to do that I want to get uh, I want to simplify things I want to make things easier you know I want to create a, a wallet that holds only what you need not what you don't need um, so you know and 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 I think in a in, in a short in a short in a brief video I just uh, I have kind of give you a quick background of the company we want to bring this company to the next level. We want to make more. We want to have a bigger production. But just remember, the whole point of doing something made in America and 100% handmade is that it is, it, it is, we do everything purchased here in America, everything is made here in America, everything is finished here in America, and all sourced out here in America. So that is the goal. You know, there is a whole blue collar movement out there all across the country that are people just like us trying to make a garage business grow bigger and that could be whether you make jewelry whether you make scarves whether you make clothes for kids uh, whether you make uh, wine you know in your garage uh, there's so many things that people are making nowadays and 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 people like I particularly like I, I support made in America when something when I can buy something that is made in America I support that because I understand that we all struggling you, whether you started today or you started two years ago you will have a struggle just like I had a lot and I still have some of them uh, and I support those things because it's important you know uh, we want to be thankful of all the things that this country had offered, not only me, but my family, my kids, myself, all the things that I have, and I want to be thankful. Uh, I want to support if there's a guy that I can buy something, whether it's a small company, I buy leather from small tanneries here in the United States. I also buy leather from the big companies too. Uh, but it is it, it is showing your support. Uh, so in a, small, in a small video, more or less, that's what I wanted to tell you today. I want to thank you very much for your patience. I want to thank you for your support. I want to thank you because you believe in the dream. Is The American dream is still alive and well. And with all the problems we have around the world, we should be thankful that we here today uh, working uh, in good health. Uh, it will be great to have a bigger company, but we are taking baby steps to get there. All right, folks, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. I know the holidays are around the corner. Uh, happy holidays to you and your family. Be well. Good health. Thank you. Bye.